Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. Over the past series of episodes, I have been building out a package that I'm calling Philotyper. Uh, this is a R-based package that will classify 16S rRNA gene sequences. Again, if that means nothing to you, please keep watching because I think you'll still learn a lot about programming in R, package development, and all sorts of other good things along the way. In today's episode especially, we are going to be talking about joining two different data frames together using three different packages, or I guess base R and two other packages. We're going to be using um, uh, dplyr's inner join, and we're going to be using data.table's join functionality as well. Um, I'm a big fan of data.table because it's really memory efficient and very fast. But <laughs> we'll have to see if it's as fast as base R and dplyr's inner join. And so that's what we're going to do today. So let's head over to our studio and we'll get going with today's episode. If you want to get access to all of the code that I am developing down below in the description is a link to a GitHub repository for the project. You'll see a link for as the project stands right now, as well as what the project looks like at the end of the episode. So I encourage you to go check that out, clone the repository and follow along and, you know, perhaps propose some changes, propose some things to make my code run even better. So in the main Philotyper directory, you'll see that there's a directory called benchmarking. This is kind of where I'm throwing a whole bunch of benchmarking stuff, as well as a vignette that I am in the process of developing. And you'll see that I start this by loading the tidyverse, as well as defining a couple of files, the FASTA file and the taxonomy file. These are what I call mother formatted files for doing classification. Um, again, uh, you can get directions to downloading these elsewhere in a previous episode. I'll let you figure that out. Um, but these are a FASTA file and taxonomy file. And so in the last two episodes, then, we talked about reading in the FASTA data as well as reading in the taxonomy data. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so we'll go ahead and load FASTA and taxonomy and reading those in in these two commands. And if we look at FASTA DF, we find that this is a data frame um, and it's because it's a data frame, it's not as nicely formatted as a tibble if you're used to working in the tidyverse, but this basically has um, two columns. So one column is the ID, so the sequence succession, the second column is the sequence, and I guess there's a third column, which are any comments, right? And so if I did like str on FASTA IDF, then you'll see here that there is, yeah, a data frame with an ID column, a sequence column, as well as a comment column. All right, great. And so then if we look at genera, again, this is a data frame, really not nicely formatted for the screen, but I could do str on genera and see what this looks like, that again, we have a data frame with 24,642 observations, which is what we saw before for FASTA DF, with two columns or two variables, one being the ID, and one being the taxonomy. One of the risks is that we, <laughs> or a user, might read in the FASTA and taxonomy data, and those two files might have sequences in different orders. And so we wanna make sure they're in the same order when we feed it into build Ktmer database. The other risk is, besides being in different orders, that our FASTA file might have different sequences than, that are represented in the taxonomy file. So what I did in this vignette was to do an inner join where we took two data frames and joined them together, which would then give us four columns. So the ID of the sequence, the sequence itself, the comment from that sequence file, as well as the taxonomy. And as you can see here on lines 12 and 13, we use that seek table variable, that object, to pull out the sequences and the taxonomy. Because we did an inner join, we know that the data are in the same order, obviously, for those two columns. And so that's what I want to talk about today is this step here. I don't think I'm going to add this join function to my package, but uh, it was kind of next in the vignette. And I thought it would be interesting to talk about the variety of ways that we have of joining different data frames together. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a new R script to demonstrate a few different things. So I'm going to start out with a couple of toy data frames. So data frames that we know uh, the structure and composition that will allow us to test different types of joins and make sure the joins are behaving the way we would hope they'd behave. All right, so I'll create one called animal legs, and this will be data.frame uh, as the function to create a data frame. And I'll then say animal 
equals, and then I'll give it a vector of values of different animals. And so I'll do cow, fish, chicken, um, dog, and let's do sheep. Uh, and again, this needs to be in quotes, so I'll wrap that in quotes. And then for another column, I'll do n underscore legs. And then we'll say a cow has four legs, fish doesn't have any legs, chickens have two, uh, all our dogs have four, <laughs> and our sheep have four legs as well. So this again creates an animal legs data frame that you can see like this, right? Good. And then I'm gonna do an animal sounds data frame. We'll do data.frame and I'll do animal equals. And then we'll again put in a vector of animal types as well as the sounds. So I'll start with cow and then I'll do chicken, I'll do cat, and let's do sheep and let's do dog. So what I'm illustrating here is that I've got different animals in animal sounds than I have in animal legs. And that is to help demonstrate a variety of approaches for doing these joins. So then I'll do sounds and I'll do moo, uh, chicken, I'll do cluck, cat, meow, sheep, ba, dog, bark. Um, all right, and so now if we look at animal sounds, we see this data frame, right? So again, we have animal sounds, we have animal legs, right? And so we have these two data frames. They both have five rows, and we'd like to have one data frame, right? Where we maybe have a column called animal, and a column called n legs, and a column called sounds. And the other question you might ask then is how do we deal with the missing information where animal legs has fish, but that's not found in sounds, and animal sounds has cat, but that's not found in legs. And how do we deal with things being in different orders, right? So sheep and dog, uh, sheep, dog in sounds, and then dog, sheep in legs. So we'd like to join those together, okay? So we will start with the merge function from base R. We'll do animal underscore legs, animal underscore sounds. And running those together gives us what is effectively an inner join, right? And so we'll call this inner uh, join. And so an inner join requires that the, the index, the variable that you're joining on, those values are found in both data frames, right? And so again, both our animal sounds and animal legs data frames had five rows, five animals represented, but the union of those, the, the overlap of those was only four animals. And so what we're seeing here then is the representation of those four animals legs and sounds. You might also think about what's called a full join. And so in a full join, we get back all animals, whether or not we have data for it in those uh, two data frames. So we'll again do merge animal legs, animal sounds, and then we do all equals true. And so what this will do is return all the data as I mentioned. And what you'll see is that we have NA values for the missing data, right? So cat was in sounds, but not in legs. And so you'll see an NA for the legs value for cat. And for fish, it was in legs, but not in sounds. And so that gets an NA in the sounds column, right? And so this all argument allows you to return all of the values. And so the default for all is actually false, right? And so this then gives us what we had before. And again, this second type of join is called a full join, okay? So, we might also have a situation where we're wanting to get all the data for the rows and animal legs, all those animals, regardless of whether or not they show up in animal sounds. That would be called a left join. We might also think about it the other way, where we want all the animals that show up in animal sounds, even if they don't show up in animal legs. That would be called a right join. And so we'll do merge animal legs, animal sounds, and we'll do all dot x equals true. And so that basically says, all of the index values, all the values that we're joining on that are in animal legs, we want to return. And so here we go. Sure enough, we get all the animals that were in animal legs, right? Show up, so we have those five rows. We even get the fish, and it has no sound, no known sound, so we get that. So this we'll call a left join. And I'm gonna copy this down, and that to get the right join, we'll do all dot y, and this will give us a right join. And so sure enough, we now see that we get cat instead of fish, even though n legs for cat is n a is missing, right? So again, these are the four main joins 
that we can use to join data frames using base R. So again, this was using base R. Uh, maybe I'll go ahead and put a comment up here. We'll say base R. And then let's move to dplyr now. So we'll do dplyr. And dplyr does the same types of things, but gives you a, perhaps a little bit nicer interface to do the joins, right? So we can do inner join on animal legs and animal sounds. And so that inner join gives us the same thing that we had up here, okay? One thing that you'll notice in this output is that it's joining by um, animal. It, it looks at the two data frames and joins by the column that it has in common, which is actually something I forgot to mention up here for base R, right? And so what we could do in base R to do something a little bit more explicit, and I prefer being more explicit in what I'm doing, would be to do by equals animal. And this again, gives you the same result. But again, I didn't have to include animal in these four merge functions because it was implied, right? Because that was the same column name between the two data frames. Sit tight and I will show you what you do when you have different column names in your two data frames. Okay, so again, uh, there's a couple of ways that you can write the syntax for specifying the column here. We could do by equals animal, and this gets us the same thing. We could also do what it suggested back up here, which was join by animal. So we can do by equals uh, the join by function with animal. And what you'll notice as being different between say this output with inner join animal legs, animal sounds, is that here it tells us what it's joining by, whereas down here when we tell it what to join by, it doesn't output anything, right? Um, and so again, I like to be a bit more explicit in defining how those columns um, are being set. So maybe I'll go ahead and move this up a bit uh, to kind of put it with the other inner join function uh, just to kind of keep those things all together. Okay, so those are inner joins. Now what about full join, left join, right join, right? And so now we could also do full underscore join, animal legs, animal sounds, and we'll do by equals animal. And this then gives us the results of the full join. Um, and if we do uh, the same thing, but if we do left join, we again get the left join, and we can again do right join with dplyr giving us the right join. So that all works really well. One thing that you might be curious about, again, this was our full join, uh, would be what happens if we reverse the order um, of our two data frames, that in some ways a left join is really the, the flip <laughs> of a right join, right? And so if we run it this way, then what we find is that the column order changes, right? And so when I had animal legs, animal sounds, it put the legs column before the sounds column. But then when I went sounds legs, it put the sounds column followed by the legs column. Cool. So again, that's dplyr and how you can do joins using dplyr. All right. So now what we want to do is move to data.table. So we'll do data.table. And to join data tables together, your data has to be a data table. Currently, we have a data frame. So I'll go ahead and do animal legs dt as data.table, data.table on animal legs, All right? And so now if we look at the output of this, we see slightly different syntax, right? This looks a little bit more like a tibble than like a data frame. Again, so animal legs looks like this. You'll notice that um, the data table puts numbers for each of the rows off to the left with a colon. It also includes the type of data contained within each column. This is very similar to what we might get if we did like say tibble animal legs. Um, and so again, very similar to what we saw with data table. Normally you might think about using tibbles with dplyr joins, but dplyr is nice in that you can give it a data frame or a tibble, it figures it out. But data table is not so nice. You have to convert your data frame into a data table. And so we'll also then do animal sounds dt as data.table, data.table on animal uh, sounds. Oh, and I misspelled sounds here. All right, oh, and misspelled it here too. My U key must be sticking. There we go. And so again, if we look at animal sounds DT, we get that. All right, 
One other thing that we can do that we've talked about in previous episodes when talking about data table is that we can set the key. So this would be the column in our case here that we want to join by or what we saw previously that we want to search by. And so then we can do key equals and we'll do animal. Okay. And so now if we look at animal legs DT, what we see is a special output at the top here saying key animal. And so let's do the same thing down here for sounds. We'll do key equals animal. And again, if we look at animal sounds DT, we again see the animal key. So one thing to know about data.table data tables <laughs> is that um, if we write animal legs, use a square brace then. So there's a row slot, a column slot, and then there's a by slot, and then there's other arguments. Right. And so this is the kind of the general syntax of a data.table interface. Um, I would really encourage you to, to look up data.table if you're interested in seeing a, another way of working with data frame data other than, say, base R or dplyr. Maybe in a future episode, I'll spend more time talking about that. So with this general syntax, we could say like animal legs and then insert into that. Um, and I guess that needs to be DT, right? We could then do animal sounds underscore DT. And so basically what you can think of this is this is going to take the keys from animal sounds DT. What is that? Well, that is the, the key column, right? And so that's going to then slot that into the row position of animal legs DT to return effectively the animal legs DT that have the animal sounds, right? And so what we find is sure enough, we have the animal legs for the animal sounds, right? And so this is effectively, um, you could think of it as like a right join where this is returning. This is, this is the output here. So this output is animal sounds, all the, the animals and animal sounds, including the legs, right? So again, animal sounds includes the cat, which doesn't show up in the legs. So we get an NA there, right? So this is um, kind of, as I've shown it here, we might think of as a right join. And so we could also then do animal sounds DT on animal legs DT, and this should be a left join, right? So we get the legs, um, the, the, the animals in the legs um, showing up in the sounds, right? And I guess left or right join, again, all depends on kind of your perspective of um, what's on the left and what's on the right. But anyway, um, hopefully you get that idea. All right, but what about an inner join or a full join? So we can repeat the same thing and add an argument to the square brace as one of the operations where we can then say no match equals null. And this will be a inner join. And so this then, if it, there's no match, then we're gonna turn it to null and remove it from the outputted data frame, right? So again, we get the four overlapping animals between our different data frames. So for a full join, we have to do something a bit different which is to get all of the animals that are in both data frames, okay? And so what we could think about doing would be like uh, create a vector of animal sounds, uh, DT, dollar sign animal, and animal legs, DT, dollar sign animal. And so those are all the animals that show up in both data frames, but of course there's duplicates. So we could say unique on that. And that then returns the six unique animal types. Uh, and so I'll say unique animals. And now we can use this with the syntax that we've got going. And so what we'll do is a lot like one of these left or right joins, uh, except we'll go ahead and index into animal sounds DT unique animals. So we'll do unique animals on that. And this should be a full join if everything works, right? And so sure enough, we get animal and legs and sounds, where again, what's happening in here is what we're saying is give us the animal sounds DT for all those animals and unique animals. So animal sounds DT doesn't have fish, right? Um, but it's got the five others. And so when it sees unique animals, then for fish, it's gonna put in an NA value. And then it's gonna do the same thing for legs, where it'll then say, well, we don't have a cat. So we're gonna put NA in there for N legs, right? So this is, again, what we can think of as a full join. So going back and showing you a few of the things that I talked about with the other applications that I don't have 
here. So in here then I could say on equals period parentheses animal. So the syntax with a period and the parentheses is a little bit weird, but it works, <laughs> right? Um, and so that is making it explicit that we're joining on the animal column. Again, I like to be explicit because that tells me when I'm reading back through my code what I'm joining on, right? And so again, we could, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and paste this down, uh, but maybe I'll, I'll show an example with and without the on column for uh, my inner joins, right? Let's go ahead and add one here as well uh, with our on animal for the full join. And again, that works great. Okay, so again, there's four main types of joins. There's a left join where you're returning a data frame that has the index values in that column that are on the left side data frame, a right join where you do that with the right side, a full where you get back all of the values in those index columns regardless of whether they show up in the two data frames, and then an inner where you only get back the things that are shared between the two data frames. There's additional um, joins, but again, I rarely ever use them, and it's beyond kind of what I want to do in today's episode. One final thing that I want to show you is what happens if you don't have the same column name in both of your data frames, okay? So I'm going to create um, another data frame called animal uh, pat. I'll say Pat's farm. All right. And then I'll do data dot frame and then we'll do animal. I'll do animals just to give it a little bit different. Right. And so then I'll do cow, uh, fish, chicken, dog. Um, and let's go ahead and do cat and let's go ahead and do sheep. So we've got all six, right? Okay. So cool. And then we'll say, uh, Pat has, and then again, another vector. Yep, we have a cow. Nope, we don't have fish. We have chickens, we have dogs, cats, and we have sheep, okay? So this again is animal Pat's farm where we have those six values. So let's think about merging animal legs with animal Pat's farm. So I'm gonna do an inner join. And so I'll copy this statement down. And instead of animal sounds, I'll do animal uh, Pat's farm join that together and it complains because it says by must specify a uniquely valid column. Okay. And so we can, as it kind of suggests here, there's a by dot Y. So we can do by dot X be animal and then by dot Y uh, could be animals. Right. And so we can specify the column that we want to join together, join the data frames by, uh, using this by syntax. So X is going to be what's on the left. Y is going to be the data frame or the column from the data frame on the right. Okay, cool. Um, and so again, we see that we now have this data frame with N legs Pat has, even though the original data frames didn't have the same column. So how would we do an inner join using uh, the same type of syntax with dplyr? So again, if we do animal legs and animal Pat's farm, this is going to complain and it's gonna say by must be supplied when X and Y have no common variables, okay? So there's a couple of ways to do this. So I'll say this um, inner join errors, okay? So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and copy this inner join and we're gonna fix it to make it look better, right? And so there's two syntax approaches that I've seen used. One I use more often because it's an older and that's just what I learned to use. So that uses by, and then you give it the C vector. And then in quotes, you put the column name, what's on the left, equaling the column name of what's on the right. So we'll do animal equals animals. That joins those together, right? So this syntax is a little bit uh, funky, right? Alternatively, let's go ahead and copy this down and we can do by equals join by, it'll say animal equals equals animals, okay? And so that gets us the same result, right? And so again, these two approaches to specifying the columns you wanna to join together, both work. What also works is using select or rename to rename the column, right? So we could also have said, taken like animal Pat's farm and change the column name to be animal instead of animals. But then we wouldn't have had the fun of, of learning how to do this. All right, so how do we do that with data table then, right? 
So again, we're going to need to have animal paths farm, which is that, but we need to turn it into a data table. So we'll do DT and then we'll do data.table, data.table. Again, I'm using the data table colon colon approach because I haven't run library to load data.table. That's basically how we've been doing things in our package development. And so then we'll go ahead and assign that uh, the argument animal paths farm and I'll do key equals animals and that's that. And so one thing we might be tempted to do would be to do something like um, animal legs DT animal paths farm DT because it's kind of the approach that we'd previously been using. Um, but then we also did like no match equals null. And so that actually does work <laughs> because we then set the key with uh, key equals animals, right? So another approach that we could use if we weren't using the keyed column would be the same general idea. Um, and here instead we could do on equals and then we can set the column in the two data frames by uh, setting them using the uh, double equals operator. So we'll say animal equals equals animals and that should work. That works, <laughs> good. And so again, the syntax is getting animal from what's on the left, animals from what's on the right, yeah? And so again, this is a great way to be more explicit about what you're joining on. At the same time, the syntax is a little bit funky, right? Anyway, hopefully this gives you a sense of how you can do these different types of joins. One thing I'll show you back up here, um, with maybe uh, the, the dplyr approach is say we wanted to put all three data frames together, right? We could go ahead and take this, um, this statement. We could then pipe it. I'm gonna use the base pipe to say another inner join with um, animal sounds, right? And so the, the column of this that we're gonna join on is animal and animal sounds of course has an animal. And so we could say something like by equals animal and that will join all of those together now something to keep in mind is that when you use the pipe what's coming through the pipeline goes into the first slot so animal sounds basically becomes the y argument and what's coming through here is the x argument right so i tend to like to make it explicit that there's something going in there in the inner join um, and so it doesn't like this because it wants me to say i think x equals that so um, that's something you don't have to do if you're using the mag ritter pipe, right? So the mag ritter pipe being this pipe, right? Um, so let me kind of show that just for completion. Go ahead and pipe that. And so then um, in this case, the placeholder is a period. And so then that works, okay? So again, think about the output of these joins as being data frames or tibbles or data tables that can then be joined to other data tables or data frames or tibbles, right? Um, and so that gets a little bit more complicated. But returning to our vignette, this poor, humble, simple thing, um, we can kind of remove that pipe by doing like FASTA DF, uh, genera, and then we're joining by the ID column that is shared between these two data frames. All right, so this is how you use the joins from these, from two packages and base R. How do they perform? So I'm gonna go ahead back to my vignette here and we'll go ahead and grab these lines and I'll plop them down here. And so we have FASTA DF and genera and I'm interested in a inner join. And so what we'll do will be micro benchmark, uh, micro benchmark. And let's go ahead and set this up. And so I'm gonna call this IJ and that's dplyr uh, inner join. And so let's, I think that looks good. Let's go ahead and run this and see how long it takes to run. Uh, again, we get this warning message when things are really fast, but this is taking a median of about 10.5 milliseconds when replicated a hundred times. So that's cool. Um, the other approach we'd wanna include would be from base R where we were doing this um, merge with all equals false. And so I'll go ahead and put this up first because it's base R, right? Um, and then I'll go ahead and put a comma at the end of this by equals ID on that. 
So let's go ahead and see how long these take. Um, and so it's not happy. Oh, because I still have animal legs, animal sounds. Should have said something. Come on. All right, there we go. So wow, the dplyr approach is about six times faster than the base R approach. So that's quite a speed up. Of course, we're talking in milliseconds here. So 60 milliseconds versus like nine or 10 milliseconds. Eh, no one's really going to notice. Um, and again, we've got about 25,000 rows in the data frame we're working with here. So again, if it was 10 times longer or even 100 times longer, uh, I guess if it was 100 times, uh, we would start to notice, but this is still, still pretty fast. All right, so let's now think about adding in data table, right? And so we'll do dt equals um, what? <laughs> so we need to create this as uh, kind of a, a naked function, if you will, just using the curly braces because we need to turn FASTA DF and GENERA into data tables so that we can join those together. FASTA DT equaling data.table, data.table on FASTA DF, and then we'll do key equals ID, and then we'll do GENERA DT, again, data table, uh, data table, data.table on GENERA, with the key equaling ID, right? And then we'll go ahead and join those together. Uh, again, reminding ourselves of the syntax from up here with a inner join. Go ahead and copy that down. And again, we don't want animal sounds DT. I'm gonna do FASTA and GENERA DT, and we're gonna join on the ID column. So let's go ahead and make sure this works uh, because I need to run all three. Cool, so that works. And again, we're assigning that back to DT up here on line 70. So let's go ahead and give this a run and see how these three approaches to an inner join compare. Very good, so what we find is that the dplyr inner join is still the fastest approach, faster than data.table or base R for sure. One final benchmark that I wanna try is what happens if our data are already data tables and so that we don't have to worry about doing this conversion. I wonder if getting things into data table is taking a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy these up here and I'll call this uh, FASTA DTA uh, and GENERA DTA. And then I'll put um, DTA, I don't know why I picked A, whatever. Um, we'll go ahead and grab this. And again, put in those A's kind of to show that these are like the second approaches, right? And now let's go ahead and run this and see how long those take to run. So yeah, if the data are already in the format of data.table, it's wicked fast, right? And so that's, that's pretty slick. But because we're gonna have our data in a data frame, using the inner join is probably gonna be the fastest approach, right? And so it's still faster than data table with converting things and definitely faster than base R. And so kind of thinking back to our vignette, I think at this point, maybe the only bit of tidyverse that we have is gonna be from dplyr for this inner join. So I'm gonna go ahead and make library dplyr. Um, actually with this double colon syntax, I don't even really need library dplyr, but it's nice to have it here in case it's not installed. I'll go ahead and leave it there though so that people can see it when they're thinking about uh, what packages they need to have installed to get this all to work. And that's pretty slick. So again, our seek table output is a data frame, which is gigantic. And if we look at str on seek table, we see that it's got four columns. It's got 24,642 rows or sequences represented and four variables, the sequence ID, the sequence, the comment, and the taxonomy. What we need though to get into build KMR database is only the sequence column and the taxonomy column, okay? And so we've seen that if we run this, then everything should work smoothly and we can then go ahead and classify our, un our unknown sequences um, like this and that we can then look at our consensus sequence, our consensus classification to see what type of bacterial sequence that we have. So that's all great. And again, I'm not gonna make a special function for basically joining two things together, um, but it's useful to have this to make sure that our sequences and our taxonomy data are all in the same order. So this is as far as I'm going to take things today. 
please make sure that you subscribe to the channel and you're telling your friends about all the cool stuff we're doing here, building out this Phyla Typer package. I look forward to seeing you next time for another episode of Code Club.